1940, Hitchcock was beginning the American phase of his movie career. He had made Rebecca, which made a huge splash here for David Selznick, and The Lady Vanishes had been very popular. You know, 1940 was a very fraught moment in the history of the war. Obviously, England was in it and had been since September 1939, but was about to get really in it. What was called the phony war was coming to an end. And, you know, now to be a filmmaker in England was to be in real danger. And many British filmmakers who had stayed after the official declaration of war in September 1939 were now leaving or were being forced to leave. Alexander Korda famously had to shut down production on The Thief of Baghdad and come to the United States and finish it here. And there was the sort of inverse pressure on Hollywood's large British emigre community to drop what they were doing and go back to England and um, sign up to make either uh, dramatic, patriotic films or uh, propaganda or documentaries for the Ministry of Information. Michael Balkan, who was a major British film figure and producer and had really been Hitchcock's mentor, went after him very directly for his refusal to come back to England once the war there started. And he said uh, that he really disdained uh, British filmmakers, and this is a quote, who prefer to remain in Hollywood instead of returning home to aid their country's war efforts. He, meaning Hitchcock, is one of our most famous directors, and he is in Hollywood while we who are left behind shorthanded are trying to harness the films to our great national effort. So this was not calling Hitchcock a deserter, but it was perilously close. And Hitchcock was really hurt and offended and affronted by this. I think what's not fair about it is the implicit suggestion that he was indifferent to what was happening in England and uninterested in making any movies or doing anything to help the war effort. That was manifestly untrue. And I think evidence of the fact that Hitchcock was absolutely proud of his British identity, was deeply concerned by what was happening in the war, and wanted to do his part to help, was the two short films he made a few years later in 1944 for the Ministry of Information, Bon Voyage and Aventure Malgache. So Walter Wanger in 1939 succeeded in getting David O. Selznick to loan him Hitchcock. That was a big get. Hitchcock was not particularly interested in turning foreign correspondent into a thinly disguised newsreel. When Hitchcock came in, his writing team started to work on the movie. These were maybe the sixth or seventh or eighth writers. Joan Harrison, Alma Revel, Hitchcock's wife, Charles Bennett, so there were many, many, many sets of fingerprints on foreign correspondent, but the most significant ones were Hitchcock's team. They turned it into a Hitchcock movie. 